That is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day. So I stand here and testify to the small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen. That the Messiah would suffer and, as the first to rise from the dead, would bring a message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. And Agrippa said to Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. And then Paul stretched out his hand and proceeded to make his defense, as I just read. Now Paul's defense consisted of rehearsing how it came to be, who had been in a huge prosecutor of the Church of Christ, and had become one of its most zealous soldiers. It was dealt during Paul's sermon or that was his defense really was, that finally Festus loudly interrupted him. Verses 24 through 29. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. You are out of your mind, Paul, he shouted. Your great learning is driving you insane. I'm not insane, most excellent Festus, Paul replied. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things, and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice, because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you do. And Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. And while Paul was saying this in his defense, Festus said in a loud voice, Paul, you are out of your mind. Has anybody ever said that to you? You are crazy. Paul answered the charge by insisting that he was speaking words of sober truth. The Greek word translated sober denotes mental soundness, moderation, good sense, self-control. Now certainly Paul's measured and controlled response to Festus bears out the truthfulness of his soundness of mind. He knew exactly what he was talking about. Poor Festus. He's new to the Jews and their problems. Perhaps he had never heard of Jesus of Nazareth. He had lived a world away from the miracles and the controversy surrounding the man of Galilee. Also, it is probable that he knew little of anything about the prophets and Moses. Festus' frustrated cry was born out of his own ignorance as he tried to follow Paul's defense, but simply did not have the knowledge necessary to put it all together. It reminds me of today as People who know little about the Bible and what it actually says make similar basis charges against believers. Humanists, atheists, feminists, and others mock the, the which is holy, true, and righteous, and not knowing at all what they are talking about. It is a manner of the blind leading the blind and everything ending up in a ditch. Paul appeals to Agrippa's first-hand knowledge of the things about which he was speaking so that Festus may know what Paul was not, was not a raving lunatic. Agrippa could testify as the truthfulness of Paul's claims that he indeed had been a leader at the forefront of a movement against Christianity. He had one time possessed the authority to throw Christians into prison and had voted for their deaths. One can almost imagine Agrippa nodding his approval. Yes, and it's just as Paul stated, he at one time had occupied such a position and had carried out the persecutions he describes. And Paul affirms that. This has not been done in a corner. This has not been done out of sight. If Festus had thought Paul was making it all up, he let Festus know that the things of which he spoke was common knowledge. 
This is a very strong point for us today as well. It shows us that Agrippa and the others present knew that Paul was speaking the truth about what he had been and what he had become. Has that ever happened to you? That somebody knows you are speaking the truth but still refuses to accept it? In addition to the fact that the recent events surrounding Paul's charge were common knowledge, Paul also appeals to Agrippa's knowledge of the prophets. Right? He's no fool, Agrippa knows. In fact, before Festus had interrupted him, Paul had been speaking of the prophet. Verses 22 through 23. But God has helped me to this very day, so I stand here and testify to the small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets of Moses said would happen. That the Messiah would suffer and as the first to rise from the dead would bring a message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. Case dismissed. Right? The prophets already said this was going to happen, and it happened. Why am I standing here in chains? Festus probably didn't know uh, the prophets at all. But Agrippa did. And perhaps Festus looked at Agrippa, wanting him to deny the, the validity of what Paul was saying. The denial never came. We know why. Because he was speaking the truth. Those of us who have studied the prophets know what they said about the coming of Christ. Hundreds of prophecies about Jesus fulfilled centuries after they were made. Agrippa has a decision to make here. He certainly would not be politically savvy to become a Christian. But poor Agrippa could not deny the truth of what Paul was saying. Now there must have been some turmoil Spiritual battle was waged between truth and lie. He knew what the right thing was, what he was supposed to do. But that meant that it might put him in a precarious position. Which side would win Agrippa's heart? Acts 26, verse 29. Paul replied, Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today, may become what I am, except for these chains. There were at least two failures. One success that day. First, there was Festus. His own ignorance deterred him from success. While he found that Paul was innocent of anything worthy of death, there is no record that he ever became such as Paul was, except for these chains. History shows that Festus served as governor until his death, which was only a very short time later, in 62 AD. Second, there was Agrippa. He has said, in a short time, you will persuade me to become a Christian. And with this statement, Agrippa lost the spiritual battle. Agrippa was so close to doing the right thing, at least for a brief moment, like Festus, he had the background for a greater appreciation of Paul's defense. But he didn't have the integrity to pay the political cost of doing what he should have done. There's no indication that he ever became a Christian. Finally, there was success. And I'm talking about Paul. It was the prisoner in chains, not the governor, not the king, that came out on top. Paul had remained loyal to the Savior and his truth. He had spoken of forgiveness and sanctification and inheritance and resurrection. Paul was on his way to eternal reward through Rome and other places where he would continue to live for Christ over the next several years. Only when we commit ourselves to the same Savior and prove ourselves obedient to Him will our lives lead toward that same happy outcome. Now, do you think there are people in our world today in positions of power and influence?
that have gotten there through not so moral circumstances. But they have gotten there as maybe they have done things a different way. Maybe told the truth instead of a lie to get, you know, one of their co-workers in trouble. Take credit for somebody else's work. Falsified documents and figures and Plates, finances, and income. For what? For just a short time to get ahead? For a short time? Or do we go by what, what Paul did in his chains? He told the truth. He told them what happened to him. He told them how they can continue down their path or change to his path. Later on we see Paul be persecuted and killed for telling the truth. Earlier in communion I kind of spoke about Jesus died for simply trying to help people, for simply trying to love people. Because ultimately, it's not this world that we are looking to get ahead in. It is the world after this that we look forward to. We see that in our country today, we see that in our world today. If we could simply go by what Jesus has taught us, we may not be rich, we may not get the most powerful position, we may not get what we want, whatever that entails, but we will live by the truth, not our society's version of it. In a short time, you will persuade me to become a Christian. It was with this statement that Agrippa lost his spiritual battle. I encourage you to not lose yours. Let's pray. Dear Father, you have shown us many examples of how to live this life on this earth. And yet we often ignore them or don't like them not convenient, or we just don't understand them, or basically they would make life, well, harder. That doesn't mean we should follow your example. Because ultimately, following your example shows love, shows compassion. You always told us Show, show love to others ahead of yourself. Serve others ahead of yourself. That's ultimately our downfall because we're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about how this decision may influence our income, influence our job title. We need to think of others, Father. And I pray tonight that you put it on our hearts Think of others and put others before ourselves. 